Good morning, everybody. Sorry for the delay. I got a little sidetracked this morning. Welcome to the live streaming of Morning Prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church, Tequesta, Florida, on this Wednesday, the 17th of June, 2020. My name is Ian Anderson, and I am a member of the Good Shepherd Daily Office Team, the ministry that brings you morning and evening prayer. To download the service leaflet for this morning's service, go to goodshepvirtual.org, click on prayer and study, and look for today's date. So tomorrow, another member of the Good Shepherd Daily Office team will be broadcasting morning prayer. Pam DeFelice has agreed to lead the service tomorrow, and we're going to see if it works. We've set up a computer in the church so that others who want to stream morning prayer can go to the church and stream from there and everything will already be set up on the computer for the streaming. So this is how we're hoping to do it going forward with people who do not live in the south part of Stewart, Florida. So good morning, Terry. Good morning, Pam and Bob. Good morning, Joan. Good morning, Jesse and Julie and Pete. Good to see you. And good morning, Nancy. Okay, since we're a little behind, why don't we get started? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life, amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Our invitatory psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm 95. We will read the Venite together in unison. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for this morning is a portion of Psalm 119. We will be saying uh, the uh, M, N, and O, or Q, uh, verses, Mem, Nun, and Samach. And we will read the psalm together in unison. Oh, how I love your law. All the day long it is in my mind. Your commandment has made me wiser than my enemies, and it is always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, 
for your decrees are my study. I am wiser than the elders because I observe your commandments. I restrain my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. I do not shrink from your judgments because you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste. They are sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your commandments, I gain understanding. Therefore, I hate every lying way. Your word is a lantern to my feet, a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. I hate those who have a divided heart, but your law do I love. You are my refuge and shield. My hope is in your word. Away from me, you wicked. I will keep the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your promise that I may live. And let me not be disappointed in my hope. Hold me up and I shall be safe. My delight shall ever be in your statutes. You spurn all who stray from your statutes. Their deceitfulness is in vain. In your sight, all the wicked of the earth are but dross. Therefore, I love your decrees. My flesh trembles with dread of you. I am afraid because of your judgments. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In our Old Testament reading, we continue the book of Numbers. This is a merciful uh, selection, both for its length and its relatively upbeat until the very last phrase. Um, in this reading, Joshua frets about unauthorized prophecy amongst the 70 elders, or at least two of them. But Moses responded, would that all the Lord's people were prophets. That includes us. Uh, a couple of notes about units here. So there are a couple of units given. A cubit was the length from the elbow to the tip of the forefinger, about 20 inches. So two cubits, which is the depth that they give here, is about a meter, about waist length for me. Uh, a homer is a unit of volume. It's about 220 liters, which is a lot. Uh, but it, to give you a, a sort of a visual, it's about the size of one of those barrels that they age whiskey in, or port wine, or sherry wine. So that's, that's the size of that. Uh, so 10 homers, which they mentioned, would be a lot of whiskey, or in this case, quails. A reading from Numbers. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, 
my Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Then a wind went out from the Lord, and it brought quails from the sea and let them fall beside the camp, about a day's journey on this side and a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp, about two cubits deep on the ground. So the people worked all that day and night and all the next day gathering the quails. The least anyone gathered was ten homers, and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth, before it was consumed, the anger of the Lord was kindled against his people, and the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Old Testament canticle this morning is the third and my favorite of the songs of Isaiah. This is, a, this is a canticle, since I'm not usually here on Wednesdays, I'll give you a little background on this one. This is a canticle that is always used during Advent and Christmas time because it has the image of light coming into the world. So, um, but I think that this is the most upbeat of the canticles, uh, the songs in Isaac. So let us say it together in unison. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading, again, is from the Gospel according to Matthew. It has one of the sweetest sayings of Jesus, and one of the most hard sayings of Jesus, all in one place. So brace yourselves. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a child whom he put among them and said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet 
and to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into the hell of fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament canticle is the Song of Zechariah. These, uh, this canticle comes from the Gospel according to Luke. And these are the words of uh, Elizabeth, who is Mary's cousin, her husband, Zechariah, who was a priest of the temple, that he said after he was uh, allowed to speak again, by the Lord. These are the first words out of his mouth. So Zechariah was struck dumb uh, by the Lord. I, if I remember correctly, it was because he doubted that Elizabeth would be able to bear a child. And this is after the child has been born. So this is the song of Zechariah, which we will say in unison. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations, 
Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A call it for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but we may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for guidance. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And this morning's prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit your, the bo whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers of petition intercession and thanksgiving, either spoken aloud and shared with all through the comments box or held in the silence of your hearts. Good morning, Wendy, good to see you. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Lydia. And good morning, Kathy. Good to see you all here this morning. I'll be right back. I just misplaced my prayer book. You don't mind me. This, by the way, is my morning prayer prayer book and what I call my working prayer book. You'll notice all the little tabs there. And you notice that Instead of the dark place being where the Eucharist is, the dark place is where morning prayer is and back at the prayers. So that's how you can tell this is my morning prayer prayer book. So I'll flip to the prayer section. And thank you, Terry. Let us pray for healing for Ann Gibb, who is hospitalized with a broken hip. And let us also uh, give thanks for the successful operation yesterday for Meg, whom Lydia uh, had commended to us. So let us pray for those whom we love. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to your never failing care and love for this life and the life to come knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And thank you, Wendy. Gratitude for many blessings. Uh, one of my favorite uh, expressions of Thomas Merton, uh, who the great uh, monk, uh, who uh, was also an author that wrote many books, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with him. Is, uh, and I'll, I'll transliterate into more inclusive language. He was a monk, so everything was men to him. So, but he said something to the effect that the grateful person knows that God is good, not by hearsay, but by experience. And I love that expression. 
because it just makes us, we have to be aware of all the blessings that God has given to us as Christians. And so gratitude is not something that we begrudgingly give. It's something that just should spring to our lips because of all that God has done for us. And Lydia asks uh, prayers for Barbara Gustafson, if I'm reading that correctly, Barbara G. And uh, Julie, uh, thank you uh, for all caregivers. Uh, so let me read the prayer. Uh, I can find it. For doctors and nurses. Sanctify, O oh Lord, those whom you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing and to the prevention of disease and pain. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit that by their ministries, the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. That applies to many uh, lay caregivers as well, I would say. And uh, as we look forward to our youth gathering, gathering through Zoom tonight, uh, let us pray for young persons. We had quite a lively conversation going on uh, yesterday night on the uh, youth group uh, chat uh, uh, on our iPhones. Um, so uh, they were appalled to find out that I'm a morning person. I joked that um, last night was going to be a great night for stargazing because it's unusually clear and the moon wasn't going to rise till almost four in the morning about the time they were going to bed and about the time that I was getting up. And this created a tremendous outpouring of uh, incredulity that uh, somebody could get up at that hour of the morning. I actually slept until 4.30 this morning. So let's pray for young persons. God, our Father, you see your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure, not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us continue with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me for morning prayer this morning. Remember tomorrow, uh, Pam DeFelice uh, will be broadcasting from the church. And uh, I mentioned at the beginning of this service, 
that uh, we've set up a computer in the church so that other members of the community who wish to read morning prayer can go to the church and do it from a platform where it's all set up to broadcast on our Good Shepherd's Facebook page. One other thing I'll mention uh, before we go, uh, on Friday, Friday, as you may know, is Juneteenth, which is a celebration of uh, the uh, last freeing of slaves in Texas. It's the day when uh, the, uh, the U.S. Army, after the Civil War in uh, 1865, got to Texas, to Galveston, and were able to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation. And it's when the Emancipation Proclamation was read out to, in Texas. And this is something that's celebrated particularly by the African-American community. Since we missed uh, the celebration of the uh, feast day for the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, it was in April when we were broadcasting, but uh, it fell on a Saturday, so we didn't uh, observe it. I am going to observe that on Friday. And so the bulletin's already posted for that, uh, and it gives the collect for Martin Luther King, and you can, I, I, can, I commend to you to read the collect and the, uh, the uh, propers, uh, the readings beforehand, because it really speaks to, to him and his um, identification with Moses as being called to set his people free. So I look forward to seeing you on Friday, and please join us tomorrow when Pam will read from the church. Until then, God bless.